Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide Mohammed Niaz with you. Today we're gonna see how to set up Azure Information Protection Scanner. So what this scanner does? This scanner runs as a service on Windows Server and let you to discover, classify and protect files on the data store. So a data store can be a local folder like you can mention C column like that or it can be a network share or it can be a SMB mounted LAN also. So in the previous videos we see how to protect, how to scan, how to rework using MS applications. So if you have a file server and you want to classify the files, you want to label the files in a file server, you can install on-prem scanner and you can add those file share folders as a repository to your on-prem scanner. By that way you are able to automate the classification because on-prem scanner gonna scan your repositories frequently and assign labels and classification based upon the uh, content inside. So this will help you to classify if you are new to Azure Information Protection, if your organization uh, first time implementing Azure Information Protection and you have a lot of documents that need to be classified and protected. So pointing like this will help you to do the classification of your data automatically by using Azure Information Protection Scanner. To install Azure Information Protection you need a Windows Server and you need a SQL database server. Then you can add your file repository into that Azure Information Protection Scanner. So for the demonstration I'm gonna use SQL Server and Azure Information Protection Scanner and File Server all in one Windows Server. And you need an internet connectivity to communicate with the Azure Cloud. If you don't have an internet connectivity, then you need to create a gateway uh, to, to communicate with the cloud services. Setting up an on-prem scanner include multiple steps. So let's go through one by one. So let's start the demonstration. Log into Azure portal with your credentials. Then go to Azure Information Protection. From there go to Profiles which come under the scanner. Then click Add to create a new profile. Enter a meaningful name. Then enter a description. Come to profile settings you have two options manual scan or always if you put manual then you need to run the scan from your side always keep scanning your repositories frequently in a sequence uh, so that is going to be a good choice for file servers then keep the information type to be discovered all next is to configure the repository to configure the repository uh, we need to add this profile first so let's complete the profile then we will configure the repository next is a policy enforcement option put it on so that uh, it scan the data repositories and if any file or document meet the conditions that we uh, applied in the policies then that gonna apply labels uh, based on that condition uh, keep rest of the settings as it is and let's go and save this profile Once you save the profile, add the repository. For that, go and click on configure repository. Here you can add multiple path. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use local C drive. I have a folder in my C drive. So, so for this demonstration, I'm gonna use a local repository you can use network path also here keep all the settings as it is then click save now the repository has added to the profile Once you're done with the server, go to Azure Information Protection Server. 
then let's install SQL Server, which is one of the prerequisite for AIP on-prem scanner. So I have some files in the data share that is what I showed to you. So that is why when we create the profile, we uh, gave data share. Uh, that is the folder that we are going to use in the entire uh, demo. So let's download and install SQL Server 2017 Express Edition. So complete the wizard for the installation. Once you complete with SQL Server, then let's install Microsoft Azure Information Protection. For that, uh, you can go to the link that provided below this video in the description. Then click azinfoprotection.exe file, then click next, download and install it. So once you complete the installation, you need to go for a restart. Next, we're gonna run a PowerShell command for installing AIP scanner. So go to your AIP server, then open PowerShell, run as an administrator, then run the command install AIP scanner then the SQL Server instance that we just installed, then the profile name that we have created in the previous one. So here it is AIP profile demo. So I have given that and my SQL Server also in the same server. So I put AIP server slash SQL Server. So let's run the command in the PowerShell and enter the local administrator credential here. Now AIP scanner installation has completed. To verify the installation has completed, you can go to services from administrator tool. From there you can verify the Azure information protection scanner status. Here you can see Azure information protection scanner is running. So that is fine. In the next step, we need to create a Azure AD token for the scanner. So in the first initial stage, an interactive sign-in is going on. After that, this token lets the scanner run non-interactively. So we have to create two Azure AD applications uh, to issue a token for authentication from Azure portal. So let's return to Azure portal. Go to app registration and from here select new application registration. In the right side you can create a new application. Enter a unique name here. Keep the application type as web application slash API. Then in the sign on URL, you can fill it up local host type, local host name. Once you have done, then click on create. Then go to settings now. You have to copy these details and keep it somewhere because we need it uh, when we run the PowerShell command to issue the token. So keep it somewhere in a notepad or something. So once you copy the necessary informations, then go to settings.
then from here go to required permissions then click on grant permission then click yes then below that api access you can see there is keys so go and select on keys then enter a key description then duration then the value will automatically populate once you click save copy this value we need this to initiate the token creation so copy to the same notepad then close the wizard and go back to application registration now when you click view all application you can see the new application that we just created we need to create one more application so click again on new application registration then enter a unique name here you have to make sure that you choose application type as native then give local host name then click on create now copy the informations includes application ID and all then put it in a notepad then go to settings then required permission then click on add then select an API option from there you have to type the application that we just created so it is AIP app so just select it then click select then delegate permissions then click on select then select done now you're done with that now you have to grant permission for that so again select on AIP app and Windows Active Directory then grant permission then click yes now you have done with the applications so then you can close these wizards now from the app registration you can see there is AIP app and AIP front and two application IDs are there in addition to this we're gonna use the key that we copied previously to run the PowerShell script so once you prepare the PowerShell script with set IP authentication with web app ID and native app ID and the web app key once you have the PowerShell command ready copy it and run it in your Azure information protection server Once you click enter, it asks you to sign in to your Azure account. You have to use your global administrator. Now the token has issued. So from here onwards, the communication between Azure Information Protection on-prem server and Azure Information Protection in your Azure uh, work with the, this token. So you don't need to frequently sign into Azure Information Protection for this server. This so the initial token uh, will help you to maintain the authentication.
Now log back to Azure portal and uh, click on scanner nodes. You can see that the AIP server that we just installed the scanner is appeared at the interface. And here you can see the scanning is progressing and you can see the number of items scanned here. Now let's uh, go back to the Azure information protection server and from the logs we can see the number of documents scanned and number of documents labeled and all. So go back to Azure Information Protection Server, then refresh the logs. Now you can see uh, the repository that we configured was a C data share. There are uh, files labeled, there are files scanned, and you can see the progress here. So this is how to set up Azure Information Protection on Prim Scanner. So you can use this to scan a lot of repositories in your organization, and you can centralize the labeling and uh, uh, classification. So in the coming video, we're going to see how to push all these logs to Azure Information Protection Log Analytics to get a better uh, Power BI based in uh, presentation of your Azure Information Protection logs. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe our YouTube channel.